Welcome back to the definitive San Diego Comic-Con 2011 rundown, day three. I have never set foot at Comic-Con in my life. I've just been in Glendale, California, in my apartment. But I don't see anyone else making comprehensive videos of every last detail of everything that happened at the San Diego Comic-Con 2011 all four days. So... Movies. There was a panel for Francis Ford Coppola's new film, Twixt. Based on the candy bar? The film seems pretty weird. Like, only parts of it are in 3D. And Coppola said he wants to tour with it around the country. Because it's, like, interactive. Like, he gets on an iPad, and based on the audience's reception, and, like, just his own personal whims, he can make scenes uh, longer or shorter or just different, or with different music. It's, it's like a choose-your-own-adventure movie, except instead of you choosing, Francis Ford Coppola chooses, because he's there showing it to you. How can you release a movie like this on video? It sounds more like an amusement park ride. There was a Twilight fan panel. Not the Twilight panel from day one, the Twilight fan panel which was like seven writers of Twilight fan fiction uh, doing a Q&A about their experience uh, in the world of Twilight fan fiction. Fan fiction is when a franchise or property develops a fan following so devoted that they have to they start writing their own stories in that universe. And Twilight fan fiction is so intense they had a panel at the fucking San Diego Comic-Con. Typically, uh, the stories in fan fiction are sexual in nature because, you know, these, uh, these fans, they want to have sexual fantasies about their favorite characters, but usually the, the show or whatever the thing is that the, the, they're doing the fan fiction of, they have to abide by certain ratings and standards, and so there's not a lot of, you know pornographic or sexual content so they have to you know make up their own but twilight seems so sexual already that like what why do they feel that what is this obsession like this they just they can't get enough of vampire werewolf sex like Sex with a vampire. I don't know what happened at this panel, and I'd like to keep it that way. TV. At the community panel, Dan Harmon talked about how if the show goes past four years, the characters will graduate and move on to other things. You know, they're not just going to be in community college forever, which is a problem for some shows. Like... The Korean War was a three-year conflict, but MASH ran for 11 seasons. So I don't know how they explain that. Y you want season five of Community to be more like After MASH, which was the MASH spinoff uh, that showed the characters after MASH. But that show actually didn't do too well because they put it up against the A-Team. In 1984, they didn't even get to finish that season. They got canceled so fast. So, I mean, but yeah, be an after MASH show, uh, but don't go up against the A-Team. What's, what's the A-Team equivalent of today? The Voice? I don't know. I feel like, shouldn't we have gotten a new A-Team show by now? Where's the A-Team reboot? I guess when the movie comes out, that pushes the reboot show back about 10 years. How do I know this? Well, there was a panel for the new Charlie's Angels show. Executive produced by the guys who created Smallville. They said how they're building a new mythology around the show through the characters' backstories. Uh, because I guess they wanted to enrich the show's universe beyond that of uh, the original show and the McG movies. If it's anything like Smallville... Expect them to do everything in the world with these characters. Smallville had one season where Lana Lang was like a witch for like the entire season. It was as if they were deciding what kind of tone they wanted for the show for 10 years until the show ended. One of my favorite episodes, Lionel Luther was being terrorized by this guy 
who was like setting these death traps and talking to him through a deep voice. The whole episode was basically a giant Saw remake. It was as if the writers watched Saw and said, let's do an episode of exactly that. Oh my god, there was a Samurai Power Rangers panel. This is apparently the second season of, uh, of Power Rangers Samurai. If you ever watched the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in 1993, which I did, there were these characters named Bulk and Skull. And they were these two idiots who would bully the Power Rangers. And apparently, last season, they brought back Bulk. No Skull. Uh, but now Bulk is training Skull's son to be like a samurai master. No clue why Bulk is raising Skull's son. Where is Skull and the kid's mom? Like, what, what the fuck happened? They were interviewing the actors who play the Power Rangers. And one of them was saying how this season has more action, it goes deeper, and it, it takes it to a whole other level. And the hardcore fans may think they know what's coming, but there's big surprises in store. No, there's not. Video games. In the panel for Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, they showed off some new characters. On the Capcom side, they added Strider Hirayu from the game Strider, and Firebrand from Ghosts and Goblins. I don't know what any of that is. And on the Marvel side, they added Hawkeye and Ghost Rider. Oh, and they're both in movies coming out next year. That's a cool coincidence. And every character will have at least two new costumes and, like, they're full, unique costumes with different details instead of just color swaps. Well, I would think so. Video games are really fucking advanced these days. I could go into the next room right now and play a game where I can wander a replica of New York City, fuck a hooker, and steal a helicopter, and throw myself off a skyscraper. I'd like to think that in a simple fighting game, we've mastered the art of giving characters different costumes that aren't just color swaps. There was a panel for Twisted Metal, and the guy there said that the, the company is embracing their M rating, M for mature, which I guess is the video game equivalent to like an R rating. And it's not even for the content of the game itself, it's because of the, the cutscenes that happen between the game that I guess are, have a really dark tone. I mean, does anyone really care about video game ratings? Like, when I played video games as a kid, I played some really fucked up shit, but a video game is not the same as, like, a movie. Kids understand that video games are not real, that they're controlling them. People die every five seconds in a video game, including the player. They never had to deal with any of this rating bullshit, when, like, in the days of Pong, or, like, the early Atari games. And you ask these fucking rating guys if like pac-man is okay for kids to play and they'll say of course but it's about a guy who's addicted to pills who's being chased by ghosts that's not a dark tone to take for a game Excuse oh i'm sorry i'm the asshole toys there was a panel for hasbro marvel so just hasbro toys that are marvel related and the whole panel was just them showing pictures of upcoming action figures like the Avengers is coming out next year so they showed pictures of the action figures for like Iron Man and Captain America and Thor and then there's a new Spider-Man movie next year so they showed pictures of the action figure for Spider-Man they looked they looked like action figures of the characters from the movies and everyone was applauding after every picture what are you clapping for it's action figures of comic book characters. They look exactly the way you think they would look. This shouldn't be a panel. This should be a pamphlet. Oh, they had a Bucky Cap. Bucky Barnes as Captain America. Let me go jerk off to that. Comic books. At the Archie Comics panel, they said Barack Obama and Sarah Palin are going to visit Riverdale. Let's take a look at that cover. Well, uh, hopefully people who see that will recognize immediately that it's Obama and Palin because at first glance, it's just an interracial couple on a date with Archie saying, wow, I guess anything's possible. There was a, a panel for Robert Kirkman. Kirkman talked about this teaser image going around for Invincible 
which shows a different person in the Invincible costume. What's going on? I don't know. And I personally hate hearing comic book news about uh, books that I like because I don't read the comics as they come out. I, I read I wait for the book collections and I read the books So I mean this this is where I am with invincible this this shit going on right here I don't know all the new shit like I sometimes hear news and it's devastating like I you see all these characters on this cover here? I found out one of them dies. I haven't gotten to that part yet Maybe I'm not the guy to be giving you all this comic book news. You know what? Put, put someone else on it. G give me the give me the slice of life beat. You know, I'll write your fucking editorials, but get, get somebody else. I can't do this shit anymore. I'm not the guy. I thought I was. I'm not the guy. There was a panel called Comics Arts Conference Session Number 11, Psychology of the Dark Knight, How Trauma Formed the Batman, and Why He's Got a Thing for Bad Girls. And they determined that, uh, yes, if if someone's parents were killed and they experienced that trauma, then yes, they would become the Batman. And that Batman is attracted to bad girls because they're dangerous, and so that makes him feel alive. And uh, yeah, that sounds right to me. I mean, that's why I like bad girls. It's like, you know, ugh, they make you crazy. I hate them, but I love them. And like, what are you going to do? Date a nice girl? What's a nice girl going to do for me? Tell me that I'm a good person and that she loves me? I want someone who fucking strips me of all my self-worth. Ah, oh, fuck, that's fucked up. I want someone who doesn't want me. I like the idea that, you know, I'm not quite safe with someone and I need to kind of be on my toes because they might fuck one of my friends or they might, they might cheat on me. They might do horrible things to me. So when they don't do that, that's, I feel, I feel good for a, for a little bit. I feel a little bit good about that. But then, you know, the bad shit has to happen, and I have to cry, but that's kind of cool. I got, that's kind of a, that's kind of a turn on, right? Oh my god, what, oh my god. Oh my god. There was a panel called, Is the Comic Book Doomed? Where they uh, talked about the future of comic books and addressed the question, Is the comic book doomed? And the answer was... No, because comics will be around for a while in a number of formats. All right, I guess I'll take your word for it, comic book industry professionals. There was a Fables panel. I love Fables. This guy, Bill Willingham, took all these old uh, fairy tale characters and just created this whole universe, and uh, it's really cool. And he said that Telltale Games is making an episodic computer game based on Fables. And it'll be in canon official Fables history. Which sounds funny considering that this entire series is an appropriation of public domain characters. But that's really the essence of this business. You know, people taking shit they didn't invent and then making up a bunch of new shit that the, the, the fans have to then go out and buy so that they can know all this shit about the shit so that they can one day stand in line and nervously approach this guy and tell him how much they love his shit and feel like they're making a real worthwhile connection with another human being and then they go home and they go on the internet forums and they argue with each other about the imaginary shit and feel real anger because that anger's gotta go somewhere and then they look at themselves and they're like, oh fuck and then they play a game or read a book and then they feel better but, I mean, I'm not saying that's everybody that's just what I've observed, you know, when I'm on the forums I mean, all right, that should do it for day three. Stay tuned for day four, which will be the last day of Comic-Con. And uh, I feel like you guys didn't really catch what I was saying last time. I want the viewership to go up, you know, not down. I think there's stuff like around this video somewhere that you're supposed to click or touch something and do something to the video. Something something you do helps the video. I don't know what. Just, you know, keep watching the videos and tell other people. Tell other people to watch the videos. I think that that's really like the simple... Hello. Tell people to watch the videos and then more people will see them. I think that's kind of a no-brainer, right? There's only so many videos I can make before I run out of... Thank you.